The following business and agriculture history video is provided to you today by the support of our Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce partners, those dedicated solopreneurs, family-owned businesses, large corporations, healthcare professionals, and educational institutions in our community. Our sincere thanks to our contributing sponsors, Allnex, Rome America, BYK USA, Ferguson and McGuire Insurance Services, The Hanover Insurance Group, Ulbrich Stainless Steels, Nucor Steel Connecticut, Inframetals, Connecticut GI, Camco Supply Corporation of New England, Valenti Auto Group, Burns and McDonnell, One Source, Record Journal, South Broad Paint and Home Center, Wallingford Buick GMC, Teleflex Medical, and our host, Gaylord Specialty Healthcare. A special thank you to videographer, editor, and director Bruce Snyder of Captivid Video for the documentary you're about to view. Our town of Wallingford has a long and successful history as a place to live, a town to love, a place to work, to play, to visit, and a town in which to be in business. Wallingford started small with only 38 families in 1670. Those visionaries were dedicated to creating and growing a strong and healthy community. A town starts with a place and some people. The people determine how to facilitate the success of the community. Generally, this begins with housing and agriculture and moves on to education and commerce. In Wallingford, our agricultural efforts were successful and by the late 1800s, we had over 200 farms in Wallingford of various types. Some of our early farms included names most will recognize. Coag Farm, owned by the Cook family, Blue Hills Orchards, owned by the Henry family, Barnes Orchards, now Barnes Industrial Park, Jeremiah Farms, Beaumont Farm, Fieldstone Farm on Grebe Road, owned by the Self family, and so many more. One of our historical claims to fame is the Hall Brothers Hatchery on Cook Hill Road that at one point in the 1940s was shipping over 14 million live chicks around the world annually. Our orchards have shipped hundreds of thousands of bushels of apples all across the world and still do that to this day. Wallingford grew commercially, initially with what is known as cottage industry. Many town residents began to make products in their homes or outbuildings, some for local consumption and others to be shipped to other markets. Wallingford was blessed to have some very creative, hardworking people who grew our commerce steadily. Some of the products that were created on the Long Highway, later South and North Main Streets, included razor straps, shoes made at a tannery, hats, clocks, fine furniture, tinware, and barrels that were used for shipping. During the first half of the 19th century, rivers became a valuable source of energy, using dams and raceways to provide the energy of fast flowing water. Industry and manufacturing began to be a force in Wallingford. This era would see the emergence of many firms in a wide range of pursuits, a great number of them in the business of silver and metals manufacturing. Some of the early adopters of this technology were Charles and Hiram Yale, descendants of town founder Thomas Yale. They used water power from the Quinnipiac River in what is now the Yalesville section of Wallingford, where Westbrook Lobster is today, to manufacture tinware and then Britannia ware, which replaced pewter. The Yales were also one of the first businesses in the United States to utilize the British apprentice system in their manufacturing, having lured a number of English craftsmen to Wallingford to act as trainers for new workers. 
By the second half of the 19th century, Wallingford saw the growth of population and businesses. Samuel Simpson and Robert Wallace were among the first to engage in the manufacture of silver products in our town. Soon thereafter, the Wallingford Community Organization dammed the Quinnipiac River where it crosses Hall Avenue to create Community Lake. Oneida Silver was an outgrowth of the spoon making and is still in existence today in upstate New York. That location currently houses the Amphenol World Headquarters. The 1850s introduced an influx of Irish immigrants who became workers in our local factories. As the manufacturing sector grew faster and faster, many other immigrants were lured to Wallingford because of the plenitude of jobs to be had in the later years of the 19th century. There was a flowering of retail establishments selling clothing, notions, groceries, and hardware on North Main Street, Simpson Court, and Center Street. Other organizations that began their growth and evolution near the turn of the 20th century include Choke Rosemary Hall, Masonicare, and Gaylord Specialty Healthcare, all remarkable and world-renowned for what they do so well. By 1899, electricity was introduced to Wallingford and commerce grew steadily due to growing population, our central geographic location, our river, two railroad lines, two major highways, Route 5, and the Wallingford Electric Division, which to this day offers the lowest cost electricity in the state. In the early years of the 1900s, change was in the air. It was a time of small business growth to serve the needs of the growing population. The surge of immigration continued to provide the hands and creativity needed by our bustling manufacturers. The automobile came on the scene, and our first automobile dealer was Wallingford Auto on North Colony Street, just north of Center Street. My great uncle was running the company, and my grandfather decided he didn't want to work with his, his brother any longer. So in 1914, he decided he would branch out of the fireworks business and start his own company, which was the Wallingford Auto Company, which at that time was a Buick dealership in downtown Wallingford. He ran it up until the 50s. My father took it over at that time. And then in the 70s, I took it over from my father. So Wallingford Buick GMC, which it's known as today, has been in the town for over 107 years. There were retail food markets on almost every corner. One of the first and most successful retailers in town was the Carrington store that sold hardware from a storefront on Simpson Court. A great many Wallingford families engaged in a wide range of retail products to serve their community and beyond. Some of the larger corporations that evolved in our town included Wallace Silversmiths, Simpson Hall & Miller, Hall Elton & Company, H.L. Judd Company, M. Bacchus & Sons Fireworks, the Charles Parker Company, Wallingford Steel, Wallingford Wheel Company, and many more. On September 14, 1915, a group of local business people in Wallingford held their first meeting to form a local Chamber of Commerce. It was an instant success with 75 members on board after the first meeting. By the end of 1915, the Chamber had 225 members. Some of our longest standing members include B.C. Bailey Funeral Home, Whiteway Laundry, and Toyota Oakdale Theater. It is likely that Wallingford survived the Great Depression that struck in 1929 due to the diversity of our manufacturing, our retail businesses, our strong agricultural entities, and a hard-working population. Wallingford was also a community of great innovation by so many of our people and companies. Today's Economic Development Commission has adopted a new motto. Why Wallingford? Innovation starts here. Albrecht Stainless Steels and Special Metals began here in Wallingford in 1924. Yeah, my grandfather started as a scrapyard in 1924 as Albrecht Steel, scrapping cars basically in the, in the 20s and the, the 30s. And during the war effort, we made the Army mess, mess kit knife. The zinc was supplied by the U.S. government. And in the 50s and 60s, we expanded to the reroll area, just like uh, Allegheny Ludlam down the street from us. In uh, the 70s, 80s, 90s, we've expanded worldwide. We have 10 factories 
and over 700 people worldwide. At the onset of World War II, American Cyanamid, now Allnex, a major international company, came to town and quickly became a major employer. Well, the Allnex site has been producing coating resins for almost 80 years here at this location. And throughout that history, there have been so many employees, multi-generational families. At one point, with 800 employees on this site, you really needed to pull from the local community and especially rely on families who worked here, lived here, made it their livelihood, uh, continue to pass that on to the next generation so we can continue to have a real strong, viable workforce. After World War II, many entrepreneurs emerged and began a great number of new businesses, including retail, restaurants, professional services, theaters, and manufacturing. On Colony Street, several automobile dealerships had their simple and humble beginnings. Look at Route 5 today and try to count all the cars for sale. A lot of Route 5 was barren land, so for an automobile dealership you need a lot of property. And there was a lot of property on Route 5, so many of the other brands came after us. So the, it, it evolved from basically the original GM, Ford and Chrysler to pretty much every brand, you know, from, from Toyota to Mercedes, BMW, on Route 5. Change is constant, and things happen that can have an impact on local businesses. In the 1970s and 80s, farmland and orchards were replaced by commercial zones, such as Barnes Industrial Park and North Plains Industrial Park, and a new era in business and manufacturing had commenced. Over the past 40 years, local companies, the likes of Ulbricht Stainless Steels, United Concrete, Nucor, and many others have thrived. Nucor is currently the largest steel producing corporation in America. BYK USA established its North American headquarters in Wallingford in 1981 and is one of the world's leading suppliers in the additives and instruments sectors. So back in the 1980s, the management were looking around for a site not too far away from where they were, which was in Long Island, New York, and found Wallingford. So they set up a warehouse and some limited production and we grew from there. On the retail side in the 1960s, while the malls took people away from the core center of town, our merchants, restaurateurs, and others have reinvented themselves once again. Being conveniently located and vibrant, we have also attracted many of the big box retailers, restaurants, and supermarkets, which line our straight and level Route 5. In a 2010 census report from the U.S. Department of Commerce, Wallingford was identified as the town with the largest amount of exports per capita of any town in the USA, with 157 local companies exporting products around the world. Technology has changed everything, from manufacturing and communications to the way we each live our lives. Today, we need to be alert to what is going to be different tomorrow, next week, and next year. Even if I look ahead 10, 15, 20 years, we have some very talented engineers that already start to think about how could we produce more out of our plant in Wallingford. And they always amaze me on just how good they are at doing that. So I think Wallingford will be able to serve our needs for a while. Connecticut and Wallingford has been good to us. We of the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce are so proud of the membership we serve. Today, we have over 500 members, including many from North Haven and other towns. We are affiliated with the Greater New Haven Chamber of Commerce, giving us a tremendous market of professionals to network with in and beyond our town borders. Over the years, the Chamber became involved in many community and business affairs, and hundreds of business professionals are involved. Our goal is to ensure we have a strong economy in our region with opportunities for your business to excel. Wallingford is home to a great number of businesses to this day, most of whom have arrived over the last 50 years. We work together retaining businesses. Our Economic Development Commission works diligently to attract new companies and together with the Chamber, encourage the growth of existing companies in our town. Companies of all types come to Wallingford for the low electric rates, the vibrant population, the geographic benefits of a central location between major markets to connect with, and several major highways pass through our town. We have two wonderful vineyards, 
many great restaurants and breweries, the Wallingford Family YMCA, the Ulbricht Boys and Girls Club, a state-of-the-art public library, and the amazing Toyota Oakdale Theater. All these benefits make Wallingford a great place to live, visit, and conduct business. Anyone interested in being in business belongs in Wallingford, Connecticut.